It's finally here, the final part to building a Batman's armory. Now, obviously, uh, I have saved the reveal until the end, but uh, I will be carrying on straight away from where we left off in part three. So if you haven't seen part three, I have left you a link in the description. So you can go back and uh, catch up from where we are at the moment. But anyway, let's uh, finish off this build. Okay, so for now, I am done with the uh, door of the vault. I'll come back to this obviously to finish off the front, uh, you know, tidy up the paints, and obviously finish off the back as well. But for now, we need to build the rest of the uh, body of the vault. So I've already pre-cut some pieces here. So there is the uh, sort of the main front body. Obviously, there's the rear, and we have two side panels as well. So I'm gonna glue these together and see how it looks size wise. Now, I know it's uh, not very deep. The, uh, it was a bit I've messed up there, never mind. Um, it's not very really deep, the, uh, the vault. So obviously these pieces are narrower, uh, but we'll size up and see how it looks. And I also need to add in the light as well. So we'll use together and then uh, we'll see what to do next. Right, here we go. At last, the final part to building Batman's armory. Yeah, so apologies this took a while to uh, come about. It's just one of those things, you know, various bits and pieces I had to do outside of uh, this channel. And, uh, you know, this is uh, some of these clips you're seeing now. I've filmed maybe three or four weeks ago, so having to remember what I did. But anyway, as you can see there, I've made up the main body of the vault. And now I'm just capping the uh, top and bottom off with the um, XPS foam that I used for the uh, cave walls. There for the side pieces. Now I do wish I did uh, add these pieces uh, you know, before I put the body of the vault together as uh, some of them were slightly too big and overlapping but I really wanted the lines all to line up together and I was choosing between vertical or horizontal but I chose horizontal in the end. So there goes in the last side panel. And then next, just the uh, you know, the rear parts of the vault body there. Yeah, I didn't make things easy for myself with this, I must admit, but uh, it does all fit together in the end. Test fitting, and then I do uh, commit to gluing that down. So for the top piece, as you can see there, I've uh, drilled out a hole, placed in a little uh, sort of a collar there just to uh, hold the lights in place because that is where the lights are going. And I have written uh, on the top of there what things or where things should be going. And uh, yeah, it's time to wire this thing up. And there's the bottom piece. And they're gonna send off to be painted. Right, so while I uh, went away and painted those, I also made the... Uh... The lighting there for inside the vault. Now it's quite simple, it's wired up in series. Uh, I didn't need a resistor because I have three LEDs, uh, two white ones and a yellow one. And uh, you know, it's uh, they're drawing enough power not to need a resistor. So, uh, but my only concern is, this isn't really that bright. Uh, as you can see there, I don't know if you can tell by the camera or not, but we'll see if when it's inside the, uh, in the vault it might look a bit brighter but I'll put them in for now and then I'll see how it looks but we are back from paint as I said there we go there's the it's upside down there's the vault there and then we have the two pieces the top half and the bottom half so the next step is where I put it I'm going to insert another piece inside the vault like so. It will just go in there for the door to sit into. And then that's pretty much the sort of main bulk of the vault done. And uh, I can then start building up the rest of the scenery. So I'll, I'll glue that in place and add the bottom on, put the top on. 
put the wiring in and then uh, we'll put it in place. So now it's all painted up, it's time to uh, glue everything in place for the, uh, the sort of inside of the door area. There's a door just to make sure it all fits in together nicely, which it did. And then to glue in the top and bottom parts, which uh, because of the way I've done this, they didn't quite fit together properly, but uh, I do sort that out a bit later in the video. But there goes the top piece. So I've just placed my Takita Batman inside the vault there. And I'm just going to test out the lights. It's not completely dark in this room, but I think it's going to be dark enough to see how this will look. Uh, there. Uh, yeah, actually, turn out all right. I think we can get away with that. Obviously, if I have the lights on, it's not going to look as good. But um, yeah, I think that's enough light coming down on there. Okay, so I've just loosely fit this for now, just to size things up to see what, how I'm gonna do this. So I've got slightly tilted to the left, just to give it a bit more, you know, I think it straight, it wouldn't look as good. So it's a bit tilted to the left. And obviously I need to access these cables just in case I want to change things around. So what I'll probably do is build up the rocks from about there, but I'll uh, include a tunnel section in there just so I can access these cables and obviously leaving a space in the back for the battery to pop in and then build everything up. So I think painting wise, it's just the front and the bit of the side of the uh, vault body that I need to do. So I think I might just glue this in place now and then start building up the rest of the scenery and we're almost there. So building up the rest of the body of the vault for the rocks, because the whole thing, you know, to be covered, as I've said, uh, there will be a jump cut in this because uh, I went, to stop recording uh, to take a break and then uh, came back and didn't press record again so it will be it will be a jump uh, cut there to uh, more of it being built but uh, you get this it's the same process as uh, the other side just peeling off pieces and gluing them all together as you can see just making sure that I've left a space there for the lights in case I need to get in there again to make some adjustments or to change the lights in case one of them blows. Uh, but yeah, like a little sort of tunnel I'm making there. Also to hold in the battery in place as well. And there's the jump cut. As you can see, look, a lot of it's already been done now. And yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm not going as bulky as the other side, just enough, just so it's all covered up. And then just dry fitting the door to make sure everything still fits together properly and that I don't need to make any adjustments. Okay, so I'm now done with adding the extra XPS foam like I did with the uh, initial scenery build there. I've just built up around the sides and on top obviously around the back. It's a little bit messy, but you're not gonna see it. It's just gonna, there's the space to hold the battery and I can still access the lights if I need to. Next up, well, it's going to be the same process as this side. I'm going to cover this in clay and uh, obviously that dry off. And also going to be covering uh, this floor part as well. Everything will take a, a few days to dry. And then once that's done, or once I've applied all that, I'll then move on to the door again, finish off the door, hang it, and then it's just a case of finishing off the vault body itself. And then I think we're done. So before I put on the clay, like on the last bit, uh, or the last piece that I did, uh, PVA glue just to uh, help the clay bond uh, to this as it's, you know, quite a soft material. It does slip off quite easily if you don't use PVA. And it just helps it, you know, get in all the cracks and crevices. So that's a relatively easy job. And obviously I do the side pieces as well. And now for the fun bit, adding the clay. So much like the other sides, uh, just using the XPS foam as a guide to make various shapes. I'm trying to mimic the actual uh, vault, or you know, the, uh, the vault area as best I can. And this top piece I've pretty much got spot on, I think. It'll look obviously much better once it's painted, but at the moment it's looking more or less like it does in the actual film. Uh, just wetting various areas, so it will attach to the other clay parts already because if you don't it, it won't stick it'll just peel off and it won't look all that good 
But the process is all the same, just adding in the clay and shaping it, and that's pretty much it. And once all the clay is on, I use my little trowel just to cut in where it meets the vault. I don't want anything over spilling. I want it quite tight in there, just so there's a definite line between which is like you no know, steel vault and what is a natural rock face. I also use the uh, trowel to you know make various markings and just make it a little bit more interesting. Then I add this piece in as well and wet it all down just to try and stop the cracking. I mean, it did crack, but it does add to the effect. Plus, you know, I just need to go back in there with like a slurry mix and just to repair those cracks I don't want. But uh, it's come out quite well. I think it came out better than the last uh, rock faces I did for the uh, bat cave. And do I wish I did it that way around? Uh, possibly, but I'm still dead happy with how the, the bat cave rocks turned out. But this is a much better method, I think. Okay, so that's all the clay work done. I started to fill in this gap in the end just because I didn't like it. Next up is the floor. So I'm going to be using this stuff. Concrete paste. Now, this might be familiar because I used that very, very similar kind of stuff on the old uh, Batcave build, but uh, this is the stuff I was supposed to get. It's not actual concrete, it's just like a paste. And uh, yeah, it looks like concrete once it's dried. But the other stuff I used was actual concrete. So uh, yeah, we're gonna use that. Spread it all around the bottom here. Uh, probably cover up this little gap as well. And then I just gotta wait for everything to dry. And then while it's drying, we'll continue with the door. So as I was saying there, this was the stuff I was supposed to purchase to uh, you know, make the roadway for the bat cave and end up buying actual concrete. It still turned out all right, but uh, this is what I was going for. You can spread it really thin, and once it's dried, it really does look like concrete. So, lesson learnt, and uh, this stuff is obviously non-toxic or anything, so, you know, we can use this quite safely. I don't think the other one was toxic in any sense, but it was, you know, there's a lot of sand in there, and, you know, obviously you can cut your fingers and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't very pleasant to work with, and it did certify rather quickly as well, which this stuff, it went off... Um, I reckon I had a good half an hour, maybe 40 minutes before I couldn't do anything with this anymore. So there's plenty of time to change things if you need to. But it went on really nicely. As you can see there, I'm just sort of trying to make some adjustments, smoothing things out, building areas up. And uh, just trying to make, make it look used, like it's been walked on. Which I think it kind of does. So after waiting for a few days, it's time to paint this. Uh, like the other side, this was like a well, I can't think of the name. It was, it's basically like a really dark grey. Keeping the theme with the rest of the uh, the Batcave. So just like a base colour, because I will be going on top of this with other shades of grey, obviously. And uh, just applying all that. Just using a rather, well, a smallish brush, because I don't want to go onto the vault too much with this. Because uh, I want to paint that with obviously a different colour in a metallic look. But I do enjoy painting, it's one of my favourite stages. Uh, I like to spend a lot of time on this and I'm quite picky as well when it comes to paint. So, hence another, why, another reason why this delayed, I just kept changing my mind and making changes and I've finally settled with a look. But uh, you know me, I'm, not, I'm never happy with it. Now this was a last minute addition. So I wanted something else at the bottom because I think it looked a bit plain a bit plain Jane. So I went out and bought some uh, like railroad ballasts, you know, for model railways. And I think it looks pretty good. So just following the usual technique, if you were laying ballast, uh, just put down a, a layer of glue, then uh, building a layer up of this ballast stuff, just to make some tweaks there to make it look all nice. And then just sort of pouring uh, a water and PVA glue mix over the top. And then when it sets, it will set completely clear, so you won't see it, and uh, it paints up really nice as well. So I'm quite pleased I went with this in the end. 
obviously again it takes you know a day or two to dry out so yeah it's just more waiting but once it has dried as you can see you can't see where the glue was and it's time for painting so initially i went with the same color as the rock face but again i do add other or i blend other colors in just to break up a little bit and i do leave some leave some bits there unpainted just for a different color than gray <laughs> as i say i mean it's just how it is in the film it's just a gray place the old bat cave not only so depressed Now at the bottom of the vault, there was a gap there that I really wanted to fill in, but I couldn't quite get the concrete in there without making a mess. So I decided to use this ballast just to cover it over, just so you couldn't see the gap. Uh, it, looks, it looks pretty good, actually. Uh, I, I'd rather there was concrete there, but, you know, I couldn't, couldn't get my trowel in there, so never mind. Next, again, like the, the rock face, I'm using a base colour, grey. Uh, it's like a battleship grey colour, just to uh, you know give it some definition. I did use some like uh, modelling putty to fill in some lines, but uh, I did sand it down. But you can still you can still see it a bit. So I'm not too bothered about it. But if you look closely, then you can see it, which is a bit annoying. But there we go. That's just how it is. And then it's time to add some more layers of paint onto the rock face. This is a colour I've mixed up. I've uh, got some more expensive paints and just sort of mixed them up uh, with, a, it was a grey, a silver, and just a tiny bit of black. And I'm literally just dry brushing this on just to try and highlight some of the, you know, of the detailing in the clay, because that's what I did in the first place, because I wanted all the detailing. So just lightly brushing it on. And it's, as you can see, it's picking out various areas of interest on the rock face there. It's worth doing. And uh, again, it was quite a fun process trying to pick out all the different areas. Right, let's have a little update of where we are. So as you can see, I've been busy painting away, doing various different sort of texture work on the, on the rocks here. As I mentioned, I've added in uh, this, I don't know, I suppose it's supposed to be like uh, old loose bits of rock sitting at the bottom there. And I've been painting on the bottom of uh, the floor, just to give it a bit more of a, a grubby look. I might uh, just touch up a bit more, just to give it a bit more depth. Obviously as well, I have painted the, uh, you know, the, the main body of the vault, which still needs finishing off. There's a gap up there, which I've missed, so I need to fill that in. But other than sort of painting things up a bit more, this is pretty much there. So I have the door, the vault door, which goes that way around. So I've had to paint this again uh, to get rid of that dribble mark, which somehow still stayed on there, but it doesn't matter. So I need to add some more weathering onto this. I've also painted the back here as well. And all that's left to do now is to hang this thing and we will be done. So that's the next stage. I'm going to hang the door and then it will be the reveal.
So there we go, the completed diorama. Now, I'm the sort of person that always finds things that niggle me. So there are a few on here, which I am gonna look at, you know, repairing or replacing at some point in the future. But obviously I've missed off a couple of the parts on the side here. Like I think they're like latching mechanisms for the side there. I did make them, uh, but didn't glue them on, but I wasn't happy with them anyway. So I'll come back and uh, do something else with those. The hinges, obviously as well, I am not happy with uh, at the moment, but uh, they can come off relatively easily and I'll replace that with something else. But for now, it'll, you know, it works, it's enough. The inside of the door is a little bit sloppy in some places with the paint, but that's just my, uh, my painting skills there. But otherwise, I am pretty happy with this, I must say. I mean, don't get me wrong, this was a fun build, so I'm glad I took it on. Uh, it was, there were different th you know, if I was to do this again, I'll definitely uh, rearrange uh, how I made this wall structure. I mean, I'll keep the clay because it looks pretty good, but the you know, the rear part of this, spin this around as you can see, so I wouldn't have so much foam stacking up like this. I would use the, uh, you know, the foam with the uh, hard backing just to make up a support structure and then just hang everything off that. It should hold. Now obviously the wiring is a bit messy back there, but you know, it does work. And to be honest with you, I'm not gonna have it on all that often, um, but yeah. But that is it for this build series. So thank you very much if you've been following along. And uh, there will be some changes in the future for building anyway. Uh, I think I've decided rather than do multi-parts that I'm just gonna go away, build the item and then release a video once it's fully complete. Otherwise, uh, you know, time constraints and if there's any delays, then you know, it doesn't look that good, does it? So that's what I'm doing in the future. So coming up will be uh, the Access Chemicals escape scene. But before that, I will be doing one diorama. That's not Batman related. Uh, it's, it's just something I really, I've always wanted to build and I thought this would be a good opportunity to do that. I'll give you uh, some clues. The first clue is uh, this film was also released in 1989. And the second clue is this film did spawn its own cartoon in the 90s so uh, let's see if you can guess what it is but there'll be a video on that quite soon anyway and i'll also be releasing a series of videos which i'm going to call um one day builds or something along those lines it's literally that it's just going to be little projects that uh, are going to take a day to build and that'll be that so lots to look forward to again thank you for watching if you haven't subscribed please do consider so it really does help me out and until the next time, I'll see you later. It's Matt in the retro room. Join Matt in the retro room. Watch Matt in his retro room. Subscribe for more and stay tuned.